proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart. Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark with his backyard forecast and Joe Zone on sports. This is the News Watch 16 update. Noise from idling trains that has had some people in South Wilkesbury complaining. But as News Watch 16's Mark Davis reports, after a meeting today, the residents got a promise that their neighborhood will be quiet again. After years of this, residents of neighborhoods near the tracks finally got this. A meeting with city officials and the Delaware and Hudson Railroad trying to solve a problem the people say has been plaguing them for years and has gotten worse since their complaints have gotten louder. I present in evidence the tape recording of the noise. This is from 100 yards away. Tuck the LaRusso also brought with him a list of times the trains have been parked near his home just over the last several months. What the residents want is very simple. For the sake of our sanity and constitutional right to peace and tranquility, with freedom from noise and air pollution, we insist that the above condition cease and desist immediately. The Delaware and Hudson listened to the residents' complaints and assured them things will change and soon, when some track repairs are finished later this summer. To the degree that they are there, the ones that outlaw as a result of the track work will not be outlawing there. So you will have an immediate alleviation of that particular problem. The residents here in South Wilkesboro are willing to put up with the noise, the mess, and the smell of these trains for about another month or so. But if by some time in August the problem isn't corrected, the citizens say they'll be back at City Hall asking for more action. And the city says it may take some legal action if the problem isn't corrected by that deadline in August. Mark Davis, Newswatch 16, Wilkesbury. Some sort of action is expected by a London cigarette company whose recent ad in Playboy magazine has some Wilkesbury officials hot under the collar. Now this is the ad in question. It's running in the West Coast editions of Playboy. It's for a brand of British American tobacco cigarettes. And it reads, worthy of Wimbledon, not Wilkesbury. City Council Chairman Bob Riley says that's degrading and wants an apology. Either apologize to the city of Wilkesbury or someone in your organization sent us a letter in apology because uh, I'm very upset about this. But others think that the mention of Wilkesbury in such an ad at least highlights the city on the map. Next on News Watch 16 Update, meteorologist Tom Clark will bang out his 4th of July forecast. Tom, there are hundreds of thousands of people watching tonight, mm. and they want sunshine. That's right. The pressure's on, Karen. It's That's a, for sure. It's a big holiday, and guess what? There's more rain in the forecast. When it's going to get here, when we come back. That doesn't... That is one big hungry cow. Hi, I'm Chad Booth. I'm Jane Adonisio. We'll be showing you some fun ways to spend your time tonight on PM Magazine. Terry Shane has the classy look of a high fashion French model. But this Parisian beauty is all American. Meet an 81-year-old bachelor who does his rockin' in the sky and on the road. And you've never seen a performance like this before, the Polar Bear Ballet. We'll see you tonight at 7 on WNEP-TV 16. There will be cries of everybody into the pool in Montour County tomorrow. That's because the state has given the okay for this public pool in exchange to open. Work on the pool began back in 1980, but it never opened because it didn't meet state standards. Today, workers were putting last-minute touches on the pool to bring it up to par, and tonight, a state inspector gave his okay to those improvements. So after four years of waiting, swimmers in exchange will be able to have their first big splash bash in the pool tomorrow. Hopefully, the weather will cooperate so that we can all go swimming tomorrow, Tom Clark. What do you That's say? That's right. Swimming, picnics, and barbecues, the whole bit tomorrow, Karen. Uh, what we don't need is any thunderstorms breaking out again. And I'll tell you in just a minute if that will happen again. Beautiful outside now. There's a crescent moon setting in the west behind me. Very comfortable evening outside. Let's check the temperatures as they stand now. And the reading is 70. Hey, that's kind of mild for this late hour. The humidity's up kind of high. A lot of water vapor in the air tonight. There's no wind. And the barometer is rising just a bit. That's a, a positive indication of things to come. There's your high today, 78 degrees here in this backyard. The low last night, 66. Look at those normal highs now, 81. The normal low, 60. 
record high. That is a sizzler. Back in 1966, the record low is 45 degrees. Look at tonight's sunset. It broke out after the showers, and you can see all the haze in the sky tonight. Orange sun setting, a live radar sweep. These are all just mountain echoes here. There are no showers and thunderstorms in this part of the area. I am looking at a small echo out this way here. You can see out by Sullivan County, uh, maybe a, a light shower out that way. But that's about it. Just basically dry over the area tonight. Just a few widely scattered light showers at this hour. Now, coming up on the graphic, we have now the dog days of summer have begun. Today, right through August 3rd. And that's because the bright star Sirius now rises with the sun, rises and sets with the sun. And the Romans reasoned that the combination of Sirius and the sun in the sky produced all the heat and the humidity, so characteristic of July. So that's how you get the dog days of summer or it's weather for the dogs. You know, when it gets uncomfortable, uh, dogs don't like it, neither do humans. Now, let's go to that satellite picture just in, showing some remnants of the thunderstorms that came through here. Now, this is the line here that will bring our next threat of rain. You can see it bearing down across Ohio, uh, Indiana and Illinois. Out ahead of it, it's basically dry and quite nice. We'll see a good bit of sunshine tomorrow, a lot of haze. But I don't think until late tomorrow night and Thursday, the showers and thunderstorms will move in once again. So I'm looking for a dry day tomorrow and a dry evening uh, tomorrow for the fireworks display. So at dawn tomorrow, though, a lot, a lot of ground fog around the area. There may not be much of, much of a rush hour. A lot of people home. 61 in Tawanda, the low. 62 in Peckville. Hello out there, Mountaintop near 60, Mount Carmel and Williamsport in the low 60s for lows tonight. Now Independence Day, fly the flag, but the heat is on once again. Temperature's a little bit warmer than today, but the upper atmosphere warmer than what it was today, so I don't expect thunderstorms to boil up in the afternoon. 85 in Halstead, West Pittston 88, also in Stroudsburg, Shemokin 87 out there in Dewart 86, in Canton 84 tomorrow, a southwest wind in the afternoon. Sunrise and sunset on this Independence Day, 536, and the sun sets now at uh, 839. The day's getting a bit shorter. Okay. Clear tonight, sunshine tomorrow. It's going to be a real cooker, uh, near 90 on some bank thermometers. And then I think tomorrow night, probably after 10.30, 11 o'clock, I think after the fireworks displays begin, some thunderstorms are possible to roll in across the state. It's going to be close. But right now I'm leaning towards the positive. A dry evening. Look at Thursday, not good at all. Lots of clouds, scattered showers, a high of 73 degrees. Friday, partly sunny, still the risk of a shower. Saturday looks nice. But a uh, pretty good day coming tomorrow. Hope you all enjoy the holiday. Karen, I've had a great day today, my birthday, the whole bit. Wanna, Happy birthday again. Hey, thanks. I want to thank all the people that have sent me cards and called me up on the phone and everything, and they probably think I'm no older than 27. I'll tell you, you don't even look a day over 24. Thanks a lot. And who's that visitor you have out there with you? My father is with me tonight. Ah, yes. helping you to celebrate that tonight. Nice. It's a great night. Okay. Thank See you, you tomorrow, Tom. Okay. If you can't stand changing planes when you travel, have we got the plane for you. It's called the Voyager, and this plane is designed to fly around the world nonstop. It has 17 gas tanks, and its designers say the trip would take 12 days. No word on whether there's a shower on board. And coming up, can an ex-Phil help the Yanks like an ex-Yank help the Phils? Joe Zone will sort it all out. Plus a look at tonight's battle in the race for the National League East. The 16 Sports Green when we come back. If you're planning on going boating this summer, I have a few safety tips for you. When stepping aboard a boat, grab the sides and keep your weight low and towards the center. Never stand up or hang your legs or arms over the sides. Wear an improved personal flotation device. And remember, don't overload your boat so we can all enjoy, enjoy a safe and happy summer season. 
He's been called everything from strange to totally bizarre. But British rock star Boy George insists he's really not all that unusual. In fact, at the dedication of a new radio station in Australia today, Boy George said he was surprised by all the attention he's getting. Embarrassed in a way. Why are you embarrassed? Because I'm just a normal boy from Woolwich. Oh, uh, you're not normal. <laughs> I'm very normal. What? Well, I guess it all depends on how you define the word normal. Maybe we should ask Joe Zone what he thinks about that. It, it shows you the quality of the reporting in England. They're asking him why he's embarrassed. <laughs> if I went around looking like that, I'd be embarrassed every single day. Let's go to the sports screen. No embarrassment there. First of all, the Philly story. Tonight, Cincinnati got him. They lose it. Kuzman got the, uh, the loss on that one. Corcoran and Virgil both hit home runs. Not enough as the Phils are battling the Mets and the Cubs for first place in the National League East. Now, let's talk about the Mets. They're trying to hang on in that race in the East. Tonight, Houston, they were up against one of the real Bruce, tough teams and starter. pitchers, the Astros and Nolan Ryan. Check the highlights in that one. Cruz had a double. That made it 1-0. And then, watch Foster with a home run off Nolan Ryan. And that ties the score in the fifth, one to one. The Mets hadn't had a hit up until that point. In the sixth, Smilman, uh, Spillman with a two-run homer off Mets starter, Bereni. And back on top goes Houston. But then Keith Hernandez off Ryan. In the sixth, a home run, two-run shot to cap off the Mets win, 4-3, the final score. The Mets pick up a game on the Phillies. Check the scoreboard. Phillies knocked off 6-5. Chicago also tied for first, leading San Diego 2-1 there in the third. Mets won, so they're at least a game up on Philadelphia. Depends on what the Cubs do. Pittsburgh, Los Angeles, TPC. Check tomorrow's parade coverage. Elsewhere, Atlanta 5, Montreal 3, San Francisco 6, and St. Louis 2. Well, the Yankees tonight trying to break a four-game losing streak, and they had Marty Bystrom going for them, the guy who they just got from the Phillies over the weekend, and Bystrom, Bystrom did the same kind of thing that Raleigh did last night for the Yankees. Bystrom pitched six strong innings, gave up a couple of hits and a couple of runs. Dave Winfield, two for four. He's now batting a major league leading 374, and the Yankees got themselves a win. Rigetti got the save. 5-4 final. Bystrom got his win first start in the American League. Okay, let's check the scoreboard. You see Detroit 5 and Chicago 8, and that's in the 8th. We'll check highlights of that one in just a second. Elsewhere, Toronto 4, California nothing. Minnesota over Baltimore 3-1 to one again. Boston, Oakland 5-5. Five, five. They're in the 8th. Cleveland 15, Kansas City 3. Seattle, Milwaukee at 7-5 in the 7th. Tigers with a nine-game lead in the American League East in Chicago tonight against the White Sox. Morris against Seaver, and we'll check the highlights of that one and look at that shot right there. Parrish, a three-run homer to make it a 3-0 lead, but Greg Luzinski gets a base hit here to drive in a run, and then look at this shot. Off the glove. It doesn't happen too often. You don't see lemon drop many. Five to three was the score as the uh, Sox took the lead with a big five run inning. Now, Luzinski, this one is over the roof. It's gone. It's only his fourth home run of the year, but folks, no surprise about that one. That made it eight to three. Rupert Jones, uh, an ex Yankee, liked the way that one looked, and uh, he follows with the same thing over the roof. And that makes it eight to four, and right now it's eight to five in the eighth inning. Tigers fading a little bit if you ask me. Let's check tennis now. Three of the four women's semifinalists have been decided at Wimbledon. The last one will be decided tomorrow when Chris Everett Lloyd plays. Karina Carlson, Chris did play today. She beat uh, Claudia Cota Kilch in straight sets. Hannah Manlikova will play the winner of the Lloyd Carlson match in one semi, while top seeded Martina Navratilova will play number six Kathy Jordan in the other. Women's action today, the men have the day off. They have quarterfinal action tomorrow. Okay, Pocono Downs tonight. Let's take a look at the second race. The winner, Bally Precious, as they go to the wire. Check the numbers. Daily double, two and five, 112 bucks. Third race triple, six, one and five, four hundred thirty-three dollars and sixty cents. Fish forecast for the fourth of July, six fifteen, and then eight o'clock.
And we were in Montrose tonight, the Instabats. We mm -hmm. played the Binghamton TV station, and we beat them in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, terrific. By and one how did run. you do personally? I just played my normal game. Just uh -huh. an average player. I just show up, do my best. Okay. You're not going to talk about that play in the outfield? No. Nope. Okay, Joe. We'll <laughs> see you tomorrow. And we'll have more when we come back. But first, here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. The daily number is 835. And the lotto numbers are 22, 18, 38, 21, 16, 24, and the alternate is 3. We'll be right back. Finally tonight, athletes are often given trophies to reward their achievements. But you usually see the trophies are made of metal. They shine a little bit, but not too colorful. Well, A.J. Giardina says that there are some very colorful trophies being made now in Mississippi. Jersey number 22 has been lucky for New Orleans Breakers running back Marcus Dupree. And number 22 is beginning to pay off for Bay St. Louis security guard Rick Rotundo. Rick sat down one day, picked up a brush, and began painting, adding life to a nameless trophy. After mailing a Marcus Dupree trophy to Breakers owner Joe Canizero, Rick received a phone call from the Biloxi native, and the two have now formed a business partnership. We turned it over to his uh, marketing staff, and we've been developing, and uh, we started out with a uh, test market for the Southern Division, granted by the USFL, and we've uh, been given a nationwide uh, license, an official license from the USFL to go ahead and give it full throttle. The rest of it's history. Walter Lewis, Eric Trevelyan, and Marcus Dupree have become stepping stones for Rick Rotundo with the sky the limit. Rick is getting ready to contact the NFL, the NCAA, and he will go for the long ball, hoping to negotiate rights with Major League Baseball. From base St. Louis, Mississippi, A.J. Jardina for ABC News. Mm, pretty. And that's our report for tonight. Next on Nightline, Ted Koppel takes a look at the predictions the experts wished they never had made. For the team, thanks for being with us. Good night and have a great 4th of July.